Carrie Harms. I'm a member of the Western Regional Economic Development Board of Directors. And WRED is one of several acronyms you're going to hear today. And we just call it RED because the W is silent, like REN or REC or all kinds of things. The mission of RED is to facilitate and promote a vibrant, diversified, and sustainable economy through collaboration and outreach. We define our region as Northwestern North Dakota and Northeastern Montana. And uh, this is our inaugural virtual presentation uh, offered to current and potential members in an effort to achieve that mission. So thank you all for joining us today, appreciate it. Um, in my day job, I'm the president of Leonardite Products, which is a mining and processing company located in Williston. About 40 to 50% of our sales are exports. This is the second business I've been involved with to do exporting. So uh, way back in 2005, I became a member of the North Dakota District Export Council, and that is DEC, but we call it DEC. Um, DEC members are appointed by the pres president and we're charged with mentoring exporters. Um, Kevin Christensen, who you'll hear from a little bit later, is a Williston exporter and a DEC member. Um, he's with us today. So through DEC, I became a fil familiar with the United States Commercial Service. Heather Rank, who is the North Dakota Commercial Service Director and Global Rural Team Leader, and Carrie Hester, the Montana Commercial Service Director, are with us today. They're going to round out the presentation by describing their services and a new program called RAISE, which I'm sure is another acronym for something wonderful. Um, I know it starts out rural. Anyway, uh, between my exporting positions, I was involved with the North Dakota Trade Office. And we described the trade office um, and the commercial service. One is a state agency and the other a federal as working together like bookends. With that in mind, we'll start the meeting today with information about STEP grants, which is another acronym, I'm sure, available to ex exporters available in North Dakota and Montana. Angela DeYoung uh, with the Montana Department of Commerce is going to start the meeting. Jiwon Kim and Drew Combs of the North Dakota Trade Office will also describe the STEP program. Um, as each state has that available. And then Jiwan and Drew will go um, into more detail about the North Dakota Trade Office. So um, I think Angie, you go by Angie. I know you have other commitments. Would you like to start? Sure thing. Can you hear me okay? I am uh, Angie DeYoung. I'm with the Montana Department of Commerce. Um, I am actually on the road meeting with Montana companies uh, up by Kalispell, which is in the northwest part of the state. Um, so I'm actually sitting in the public library, um, <laughs> which is why I've got a headset on. So I apologize if that's awkward. Um, and hopefully I can share my screen here. Uh, and I believe uh, my other Mon Montana colleague, Carrie Hester, will be on a little bit later. So hi, Carrie. Um, and uh, Montana has been working with Heather and her RAISE program um, for a couple years now. And we have a bunch of companies using that program. Um, and it has really rounded out our services. We're a very small office in Montana. Um, we only have three staff. Um, and so on having the RAISE program available to our rural businesses um, so that uh, they have someone walking them through international market research one-on-one -on -one is, is fantastic. So I, I can't recommend it highly enough. But our, uh, so the state of Montana has, um, as do many of the other 50 states, um, has gotten funding from the Small Business Administration um, for the State Trade Expansion Program, the STEP grant. Um, and that program is exclusively to help uh, Montana companies to sell their products outside the US, uh, whether that's to Canada, Mexico, Japan, Taiwan, etc. Some of the ways, uh, basically what we do with this program um, is we provide, uh, let me go back one here. Uh, the 
part of the grant funds go towards cooperative marketing opportunities where um, we have booths at large trade shows or we host virtual trade missions, in-person trade missions um, in conjunction with the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, and so companies can participate in those activities that we plan um, and, they, and they get to come along or they can use the step grant funds to to do their own export activities um, and get reimbursement for that. And, and in that way, Montana sees it as a way to share the risk of trying out something new to expand their markets. So just really quickly, I'll go through the options. Um, and we basically make available every option that the SBA allows us to um, with our step grant. So the most popular program is a 75% reimbursement up to $10,000 for exhibiting at international trade shows. Now those international trade shows can be um, what would be the obvious uh, which would be outside of the U.S. Um, they can be uh, exhibits, they can be conferences, um, any place where you are, you know, have a table, have a presence, and you are promoting your products. Um, and we can fund up to three of those, uh, depending on budget levels. And it, it is a 75% reimbursement. So this is our way of, if you're trying out a new show and you're not sure it's going to cash flow for you, you're not sure it's going to give you the return you want, you can use the step grant to, to try out this, this show. We also work with, uh, with Kerry Hester and his um, other U.S. commercial service programs to provide reimbursement for all of their services. And I, I think Kerry's going to go through those a little bit later, so I won't uh, belabor that point. Um, but anything that the U.S. commercial service can do to help exporters, we will provide a reimbursement for. Um, and, and the trade show and the if the commercial service program involves international travel, also has a $2,000 travel stipend. So if you spend $2,010 on international travel, which these days you'd basically do with the airfare out of Montana, <laughs> um, uh, we don't have big airports in Montana, um, we'll reimburse 2,000 of that. And we can also provide the international travel stipend for international sales calls. So if you're going to go to Australia, meet with your distributor and go around and do sales calls on the customers that that distributor uh, uh, ships to or, or gets the product to, that is eligible for the $2,000 travel stipend as well. And if any, anyone has questions, I can see when they come up in the chat. So feel free to type them in the chat and I'll try to get them. Click on to the next. There we go. We also uh, provide a 75% reimbursement up to $6,000 for um, international compliance testing. So if uh, your product is subject to the CE mark, the, C the European safety standards, um, and you have to have a third party author or um, approve that and, and um, authorize your use of that CE mark, then any costs incurred with that third party is eligible for that 75% reimbursement. The same goes with international intellectual property protection. So if you're going to file a patent in Japan or a trademark in Taiwan um, or a, a, a copyright, we it, through a third party, um, we can help with the, the reimbursing the cost uh, from those services. This e-commerce and website fees has definitely grown um, in popularity as COVID continues to mess up everyone's travel plans <laughs> and going to international trade shows. So if a company is looking to uh, create a, an international website, you know, a .ca for Canada, um, we have the we can reimburse that project with third party um, contractor up to ten thousand dollars, seventy five percent. So that can be for um, 
host the the fees for hosting your website it can be for the design and the translation of that of the website um, anything that you need to get that up and going, registering the, the uh, international URL, et cetera. Now you can either use your own contractor for that. It does have to be a third party, um, not in internal, um, or you can use our Montana Online Global Program um, where we have pre-selected a contractor who is offering a, a contract rate, basically a, a package rate um, that makes it very affordable, very, very easy to understand for getting your website is what they call globalized or localized. Additionally, any fees for getting international e-commerce set up on your website, whether it's accepting payments in international currency or the widgets that you need on your page to, to get that done or the platform, software, et cetera, any, any costs for that are eligible. Lastly, with the STEP grant, um, we can provide reimbursement for international digital marketing. Uh, so if you wanted to have, uh, if, if you're selling to um, emergency room doctors around the world, you can do LinkedIn advertisements, you can do Facebook ads, um, Instagram ads. Uh, so any of the costs related to that, whether it's the placement of it, the design of it, um, anything you need, as again, as long as those are third party expenses and exclusively international. So that is what Montana has to offer as far as the, the STEP grant goes. Um, our exportmontana.com, you can click on there and hopefully find the STEP grant information easily, or you can email me at that address and I can answer any questions. Thank you, Angie. G1, do you want to continue with the North Dakota uh, trade office information um, on STEP as well? Oh, thank you, Angie. So uh, North Dakota Trade Office are also administrating the uh, State Trade Export Pro Promotion Program, STEP program, granted by SBA, Small Business Administration. And as Angie mentioned, pretty much the same. This is for small and mid-sized company located in North Dakota, only for the North Dakota. And one requirement is uh, this step program can be used by one year old company. So if, if you are in the industry doing business for more than one year, you are qualified. And 75% reimbursement total expense for qualified activities, same as Montana. And uh, per company total reimbursement uh, amount per company per step year is $25,000. And this is the, uh, uh, the uh, qualified activities. So anything related to international marketing, promotional activities that will be uh, qualified activities and 75% of total expenses will be uh, reimbursed. So foreign trade missions, the trade office organized trade missions and if they are participating, then they can use this uh, trade mission to cover their participation fee. And also trade office use these funds to organize uh, the trade mission uh, hosting costs. So in that cases, participating company can get also reimbursed their, you know, trade, uh, travel expenses, hotel fees, per diems, that kind of thing. As Angie mentioned, foreign trade, foreign trade show attendance, you know, expenses, travel costs, the hotel, even the uh, registration fee, or if they pay a booth fee, that also 75 will be reimbursed. And if a company, you know, before pandemic, many of North Dakota company use that program to travel foreign countries to meet with potential buyers. We call that as named as foreign market sales trip. That is very, uh, many companies have used that for this purpose and that has a great return on investment. So this is, you know, travel options is very important on step, step program for companies to use. 
Also, as Andy mentioned, since pandemic started last year, travel has been restricted, you know, they cannot move anywhere. So it means that we have used many virtual things, virtual marketing using their LinkedIn website update, translate, you know, their website, you know, those type of things using, you know, media. So non-travel options, first thing is website localization. So that is also included as qualified activities. So uh, in this case, you know, travel options that has a reimbursement, each qualified activity has their own selling. But usually travel options from 3000 to $5,000 based on what country and how many days, how many people they are travel. And website localization is up to $8,000 per company. And another thing is design of marketing media, marketing material. It is also, as Angie said, you know, designing of their website or LinkedIn page, Instagram, whatever digitalized marketing tools is up to $10,000 reimbursement. And the uh, next page is also the list of non-travel options. So translation of digital or printed materials, virtual trade mission registration fee, testing. So if some company in some cases when they are you know, sending samples or products abroad, country and foreign importers and buyers request some compliance testing, that is also will be reimbursed through STEM. Shipping samples, which is very important, that is also covered by STEP. And as uh, also uh, Angie mentioned, many companies also working with commercial service, their race program. Not only race program, but also all the uh, fee-based commercial service you know, programs, that those are also qualified activities under STEP programs. So in commercial industry companies, they usually working mostly working closely with commercial service, race research and gold keys, you know, travel options and non-travel, globalization, you know, uh, feasibility research, those type of things, all are covered. Seventy five percent of expenses will be covered by step. And also uh, non-commercial industry people like agricultural product exporters. We also working with Food Export Midwest. They also organize many in-person events like trade show and also virtual event. And they provide also some you know, services at the expo or trade shows, it's a fee base. That is also covered by uh, step uh, program that is also any food export Midwest fee based program services is qualified activity under step. So those are also can be used for agriculture industry exporters. So you know we have some time limitations. So if you need more specific information or if you are planning. You really don't need to start or at, 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 at your planning stage. If there is any financial sources that you can use, you are seeking out, then contact us and we'll discuss what kind of project is it and we'll, we'll find out you know, your project, your planning is under what kind of, what type of qualified activity and how up to, up to, you know, how much you can expect to reimburse back from step program. So, true. Is there anything else that I missed or uh, you, you'd like to add on step program? No, G1, uh, thank you uh, for that. It was a good description. Uh, I will add a, a little, little bragging since I can. Uh, in North Dakota, uh, has traditionally, and the same with the last grant round we went through, uh, ranks high amongst all the states. 
uh, on uh, uh, rate of return on investment uh, on on the step program and the SBA. Uh, I got to say, it's really neat to look at the top 10 scores and you see states that get huge uh, raise grants uh, like uh, California, Texas, uh, New York, places like that. And then right in the middle of them, you see North Dakota. Uh, so our, our, our companies that utilize this program have done very well. Um, and we're hoping to uh, expand it more. Um, another point that I always like to, to, or like to bring up here lately is that, uh, you know, because of COVID, uh, the SBA uh, lowered a lot of folks' grants uh, and they actually expanded ours. Uh, so we're one of the only few states, I, I'm not sure about our friends over in Montana. Uh, I know they do really well with their step program as well, uh, but it was quite a quite an honor uh, to, uh, you know, put in our bid amount and for them to come back at us and go, hey, are you sure you can't utilize more funding? So it's there, it's available, uh, please use it. Thank you. Do you want, do you want to tell us more about the trade office, please? Yes, I would love to, thank you. And I will reorganize my presentation again and I will share it in a second. Well, you're doing that. Can I ask a real quick question? I, I did pose it um, in the chat room, but let's say you've uh, sent samples or you've had things translated within the recent past. Is it possible to have any of these retro, any of these expenses uh, apply for step on a retroactive basis? We have received multiple questions exactly like you. Okay. Unfortunately, the step process is we need to a new new company, we need to receive two application forms. Okay. First one is company application to get qualified that company is eligible to use the step. And okay. the second is after approval, second application is activity application. Got it. So, once you submit that activity application, then you are you okay to use the funding. But before, Not I'm sorry, so but no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions regarding STEP? No, okay. Now it's 325 exactly. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> So, Drew, you want to start? Sure. Uh, uh, I know most of you know me, but I'm, I'm Drew Combs. I'm the executive director of the North Dakota Trade Office. Uh, and, uh, you know, want to save some time. I'll, I'll cut out a lot of the, a lot of the talking and, and let G1 uh, introduce the, the trade office. He's our, uh, our, our front facing person. And he's the one that goes out and meets with folks and uh, I'll let him, let him take over. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Again, it's nice meeting you all. Thank you very much, Sherry, for inviting us and giving us a chance to introduce who we are and what we do. So before I go, go, to, go, go into introducing trade office, who we are and what we do, let me announce one thing before. So do you see the slide? Trade Office is planning a roadshow event to all around North Dakota. We divide four different regions. So Western region, Central region, North, North Central and South Central region. The purpose of what we are planning this roadshow event is to increase the awareness of Trade Office so that exporters and export potential companies to utilize trade offices, program, and services. First roadshow is next week. We decided to go first to the Western region. So we plan to uh, stop at the Dickinson area in Williston. So September 27th through October 1st. 
We list an area who will stay there September 29th through October 1st. So trade off is staff, myself, Drew, and the uh, uh, international business manager will visit companies in that area to have one-on-one -on -one meetings to hear, listen, their business updates and also uh, their potentials. And, and then we discuss how trade office will assist them in their plan or their international business expansion. So you are interested in meeting with us, talk about you know, your expert potential, and trade offices, program and services that will assist you ex expanding your business, please contact us. Then we will visit your office to sit down with you and hear and discuss further for, for during next week. Okay, I will start the uh, uh, briefly introducing who we are and what we do. So trade office is nonprofit organization, membership based. And we are private public partnership. So we receive funding from North Dakota states and also some portion of our operation uh, 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 money is from our membership deal. We have 12 members of board of directors. Uh, Lieutenant governor is the chairman of board and house majority leader. Commissioner, Commerce Commissioner, and Agriculture Commissioners are on our board. And besides those four, uh, four gentlemen, exporter members, you know, exporter company owners, and trade service providers. I will explain a little later who trade service providers are. They are all on our board members. So it is a good mix of private and public sector. Member industries, we, you know, as you see the aviation, agriculture, education, energy, tech, and machinery and transportation. That is the, uh, just listed here, but any industries in North Dakota and who are looking for and seeking assistance in exporting, we can cover that and we can work with them to assist and support their export business. Trade office team, you just met Drew Combs, our executive director, and Lindsay Warner, director of operation, and Amanda, communication manager. She is also a main contact for step program administrator. So Amanda will be the person, and myself, Juan Kim, executive, uh, international business executive. And Imran is export assistance. I will also briefly introduce who export assistants are and how you could you know, benefit out of export assistance. So we have total five staff. Our main headquarters is in Fargo. The Drew comes located in Bismarck. So we have two offices. So we have total four member group, exporter members, trade service providers, and we call them RAMP, Reciprocal Association Member Partnership, and NDTO Ambassador. I will, I will explain a little, deep, uh, little detail later who RAMP and Ambassador are. So exporter membership is per year, membership due is $27.50, and trade service providers from 2000 to 12. 1,500 is a membership fee. So I, we categorized total five different uh, uh, characters, you know, of our services that we are providing to our exporter members and trade service providers. So first thing is trade education and database. So I will just skip through and the uh, briefly introduce. So. Trade office organized every year global business connection conference, inviting guest speakers, well-known guest speakers to talk about, you know, recent and upcoming trend and global issues on exporting and trading. It will be a one-day event. 
and also uh, it will be divided like a key keynote speaker session and then divided into several different you know breakout sessions to cover and talk about discuss about you know many different things related to international business and trading yeah, at the end of the event we have uh, NDTO member only networking event so we heard from our members and potential members that that will be a very helpful event so that they can you know identify and also you know establish some business you know potential and business uh, uh, relationship and also if they have a question to you know many many years of experience of exporters and they are facing a little difficulty on uh, small issues they can also get some advice from them so this is also uh, a very important aspect of our uh, yearly event global business connection another educational program that we provide is e2 open which is e-learning program so only only to this this program will be provided to only our members and they can access this on-demand web-based program through our membership, uh, through our NDTO website. As you see, it's a level one, level two, level three divided, and each has each level has uh, difficulty topics. So it will be very nice for a new to export, or if uh, a company have hired a new person to manage and take care of export business or compliances this will be a great tool for them to be training their new staff and the uh, new to export company a to g world trading is a database and as you see here is a company business guide do's and don'ts and norms are also included here in each country also basic you know uh, country information and also some you know important income terms information anything you know trade international trade related topics is you can find it here and get some information out of it so this one also member can access anytime through NDTO website many companies use this before to prepare their foreign sales trip so this is very helpful to understand the culture business culture, you know, on also demographics and economics in all the uh, those target countries. Another database tool, we have our in-house statistical data program. So they will know historically what product exported where and mostly exported so that, you know, our member companies can get some idea. Okay, this country, they import this much and steady. They have imported a lot, but now it's a, a, a decreasing uh, trend or increasing trend. Some sort of that kind of information they can get so that they can kind of narrow down where to go to promote or if they are uh, trying to expand existing markets. And, you know, how the trend is, they will take a look and they will understand using this statistical program. Another thing is Compass is a B2B search, business search program. So if a company is interested in a specific country and they would like to see how many companies in that industry and who are their potential buyers, then we run this program and get some information, you know, how many companies, who they are, even even if possible, get the uh, contact person and contact information of the company uh, uh, procurement manager. Another database is visual compliance. We call it as a bad guy search. So it's a vetting software. So uh, if we know company name and contact person and their uh, company location, we can use this program to run so many red flags that the company or the, uh, the individual has. So this one is combination of uh, many different federal uh, red flag, bad guy search list. So 
if there is a company or individual who has some illegal activities or in a lawsuit or something, anything red flags that ring the bell, then we will get this information so that companies can you know, prepare before, before approaching to any company who contacted them to get you know, started initial business uh, discussion. We have used this for many times in last year, uh, you working with the uh, West Dakota State Department of Commerce uh, because they are procuring the, uh, the PPE product for masks and you know gowns. So, but we, we found several red flag companies. So that, that was really good tool for last year uh, to vet companies. The next is market research and marketing services. Okay, so we also prepare in a uh, uh, yearly basis, the uh, country profile, so the company can access anytime through our, our uh, website to take a look, you know, the, uh, the, the statistical industry specific market report with statistics and, and summary of trading statistics it will be also a good tool for our exporters to take a look you know how the industry is at and also any uh, business potentials and you know what else they need to prepare and consider before going into there member directory on our website that is also a good marketing tool because we have a uh, pretty heavy traffic because we've been in this industry for a long time. So anytime, every time a uh, foreign company or even domestic company visit our website, they went in there to take a look at our member companies. And if they like to communicate and contact them, they use our website. So that will be also another uh, good marketing tool to, uh, to promote their company and product. Company listing in the event catalog and guide. So, like as I mentioned, the uh, uh, global business connection, those type of events, any events, we uh, list our member companies at the uh, their catalog, so that companies can take a look and communicate and contact to our members. We also uh, periodically uh, is uh, issuing and sending out our member company success story to not only to our member, but also all the uh, network and connect con contacts accumulated in our system. That will be also another marketing tool. A track mission management. So one of our uh, program for our member companies to, uh, to promote their product and, and, and their services is trade mission. So we have two trade missions, outbound trade missions and inbound trade missions. And we do all the logistics for our delegates if they are going out in, 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 invariably and participating outbound trade missions. So outbound trade missions is we organize delegates and go to a foreign country to meet with potential buyers and also visit their facility, offices, and some tour of you know uh, port and some uh, important you know uh, uh, trade related areas in that country. Also, on a trade mission, outbound trade mission, we work with commercial service in that foreign country and also USDA foreign agriculture service. So every day, uh, not every day, every mission, first day morning, commercial service office and the uh, foreign agriculture office uh, staff gave uh, the market briefing in the morning. That is also helpful, helpful to understand uh, the markets and also the trend and prepare for the future. We also organize the uh, trade mission into some specific shows, uh, trade fairs. So we organize, we hold a booth and invite our members or if there is some members that are unable to attend, then we brochure uh, exhibition 
uh, is possible. So we bring the our member companies brochure on behalf of them. We communicate with potential buyers and visitors and switch swap the uh, business card and then provide the uh, that to back to our member company. Inbound trade mission, we call it reverse trade mission, is we invite foreign potential buyers back to North Dakota. One full week mission, we are visiting our member companies who are participating in this trade mission. Uh, so hire a bus and then we stop in each of our member companies to, for them to have opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and establish business relationships. Another reverse mission that, that we just, you know, every year we are holding is International Vis Visitors Program at Big Iron Farm Show. So Big Iron Farm Show is every year held in Fargo at the uh, Red River Fairground. And event in event, we are uh, uh, working with commercial service, inviting average about 100, 120 foreign visitors to Big Iron. So this is ongoing project. It will be held next year. But due to pandemic this year and last year, uh, IVP it was canceled and, 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 and decreased, the, the size has been decreased. But management, so as <clears throat> using all of those programs and services, we involved in our member companies, international business project, marketing and promotional things, and also uh, we involved in, in their uh, specific project and activities. So using this statistical program, b 2 Search, we'll work with them to narrow down, identify potential foreign markets, and also even possibly to identify potential buyers. If they, if they have, our member company have any specific problem issues on, you know, their logistics or regulations in sending the product to foreign countries, we have involved in step in and using our accumulated network to find out any possible solutions. With them. Export assistance program. So this is a, a, a kind of win-win program for master's degree students and the, uh, our member companies. So is, this is uh, <clears throat> this program is to simply to say our member company to hire graduate students for 20 hours per week to work for that company on any you know research marketing anything they would like to you know utilize that students. So this will be also a good you know uh, good tool for small size company who wants to do in-depth research or identify, you know, potential markets, those type of things. And graduate students will have their tuition wave and $13.75 an hour is the uh, minimum wage the company needs to pay for the uh, students. Trade service provider is, is, you know, a company or an organization like bank, transportation company, uh, in, uh, credit, export credit insurance and law firms who provide services to supplement the international business. So we have those our uh, as our members. So any company is looking for some legal advice or financial, you know, uh, sources and logistics, transportation, then we can come and contact connect them to those TSPs. Lastly. We have also our export incentive, which is membership reimbursement, $1,500 per year if they are participating in those type of activities. So membership fee is $2,750, and if they are actively participating in all the events to maximize their reimbursement, then their you know, out-of-pocket membership fee is $1,250. So two provide this benefit to our member is one reason. We like to encourage our members to actively involve the in international marketing you know, uh, activities so, so that they can expand their business and also we can assist more actively using our you know, software 
programs and services. So it's a good tool. Ramp members like, you know, Sherry is new, new red. We work with them, you know, they're those are all our existing ramp members to, you know, shout out who we are and what we do and then help them grow their business. So we are sharing all the, uh, the, the same missions, support North Dakota company, individuals and community to develop their economy. Those are our ramp, ramp members. Ambassador members are simply to say financial supporters, you know, sponsors. So this McMandan Auction Group and Jekyll Commodities are our uh, ambassador who support us as financial. Thank you, Duan. Right. Yeah. So that will so be it. <laughs> I'm going to reel you in. Yeah, we want to stay yeah. on schedule a little bit. And yeah, that, I'm sorry. It's no, not, that's yeah. okay. And we know that you're going to be in Williston um, next week, so we would invite anyone from the area. And if you're on this um, meeting today and you know of somebody who could uh, benefit from meeting with G1 next week, um, I'm sure we can. I have his contact information, so don't hesitate to contact me, and I believe that Anne has it as well. So um, we're going to move on, if we can, G1. Yes, um, I'm sorry for taking some time. Thank no, you very that's much. All right. for, yes. <laughs> We're going to stay on, and then uh, my colleague uh, Kevin is going to introduce the commercial service uh, participant. Thank you, G1. Thank you. It's all yours, Kevin. All mine. Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Christensen. Thank you, Sherry, for inviting me here. Um, just my take on United States commercial service. When I got into this business, I bought it, and our we service about 200 mile radius. I needed to expand that. I got hold of the commercial service and Heather and fixed up the matrix. We focused on 15 companies. We took the top three. We really focused on them, uh, get a list of the customers and um, started to pursue them. Um, fast forward about seven years. We now have 22 countries that we service. I have three international distributors. Uh, we're shipping every day internationally. My number one customer is in Belgium, and that's all through the help of Heather with the United States Commercial Service and a program um, called RAISE. It is amazing. It helps us almost every day. I'm in constant contact with Heather, and she's just basically a superhero for uh, this little company here in Williston. With that, that's just kind of sums up who we are. Um, just to tell you what, I manufacture a little drill bit. We, that's what we ship worldwide to the mining industry, geothermal, geotechnical, and water well um, industries. And um, with that, I'd like to introduce Heather Rank, who is the United States Commercial Service Office Director of North Dakota and the Global Rural Team Leader. And also after her, Carrie Hester, U.S. Commercial Service Office of Director of Montana. Heather, you're up. Um, I have a big construction project going on, so I need to give them a five-minute warning. So Carrie's going to start, um, and then I'll go. I'll go at the end. <laughs> Thanks. Hopefully, uh, you should see a slide that is entitled "The World Is Open for You Business." Um, can I get some feedback whether that's Visible? It's great, Carrie. Yep, I can okay. see it. Thank you. Okay. So the way Heather and I wanted to run this um, is I'll do a, a kind of overall uh, overarching um, introduction of the U.S. Commercial Service. Uh, and I'm going to talk about our four pillars of activities. And then what we really want to spend a lot of time on is the RAISE program, which is a customized market research um, service. So if I can, um, the U.S. Commercial Service helps companies export abroad. They do this through a variety of means. The first bullet you'll see is entitled export counseling. The second bullet is uh, market intelligence. Uh, third is, is business matchmaking and then commercial diplomacy. What do, what do we mean by this? Um, export counseling is largely a technical issue. So um, like in Montana, uh, we, we don't have freight forwarders here that are operating in the state. Uh, you know, some businesses might have met a freight forwarder somewhere else 
and their freight forwarders in Washington or Seattle. But I get a lot of calls from companies on technical issues, typically associated with product delivery. So they might be asking me about export licensing matters. How, you know, is a license required or not inquired, or how do you understand to to determine whether uh, how do you determine whether a license is required, or uh, you know, what's this whole thing, the EEI and export filing, you know, how do I report that? What am I reporting? What's my HS number? They don't know these types of things. Um, I have some of that. Much more, much more frequently, I have questions uh, from exporters that are making inquiries about what their target markets import regulations are. In other words, the documentary requirements, what documents need to be submitted, to that nation's customer service from the importer in order to clear customs. So we do a lot of research like that. Other times people will ask us about origin rules for free trade agreements that the United States has, has signed with the country bilateral uh, or in or multilateral trade agreements. Um, I already talked about HS classifications, but for those that don't know, HS is the Harmonized Commodity Coding and Description System. And basically, it assigns a numerical um, uh, a, a numerical what tag to uh, products. It's usually a ten-digit number. It's in the Schedule B tables, but we also use that also to delineate what duties and taxes are in a company's uh, target market, or to generate marketing reports uh, using the Wiser database, which uh, Mr. Kim showed previously in his uh, talk. And then we also help on website globalization reviews. And I do that in conjunction with Heather's office, the Rural Export Center in North Dakota. It's turned out very well. When we get into market intelligence, that's the provision of information to companies to help them identify uh, new, new markets, potential markets for them, or potential buyers. But we have country commercial guards, which are really good uh, sources of information as a, to introduce oneself to the market. Primarily, uh, my favorite chapter in there is trade regulations and standards because you know we're basically using that kind of information to, to identify what, um, what regulations, what documentary requirements need to be met in order to deliver your products to your target market. Uh, INA, our sister agency, has a top markets reports. Those would be for leading industry sectors, and they'll give you reports as to which markets around the world are good markets, things like that. RAISE, I'm going to leave that alone. That's going to be for Heather. Uh, IMCs, that's another thing that I, I believe was created by the uh, North, uh, North Dakota office, Heather's office. It's an initial market demand assessment report. Very nice uh, report helps companies decide whether to go forward in a market or not. ICP is background checks. And then we get into business matchmaking. We have a number of other service here. What I really would want to say is in the current operational environment where COVID is, is um, COVID restrictions prevent travel, we're not offering in-person services at this time. So the GKS, which was prior to the outbreak of COVID, are, are leading uh, export promotion service. That's not being offered. Rather, as of March 2020 last year, we switched over to virtual services in the IPS and truly the IPS Plus, which is a virtual introduction of pre screened potential partners abroad. We're doing a great number of those. And uh, I will say that the US industry early on in COVID, um, there, there was some reticence on their part to, to uh, utilize the virtual services, but kind of just by the nature of what COVID has forced, it's been widely adopted and it's working out very well. SCP is a little bit different. IPS, you're looking basically for distributors or something. SCP, single company promotion, is basically a like something like a product seminar that's targeted to end users. So very good programs. Those are run both by uh, the U.S. offices where we reach out to our overseas posts, or they may be done, you know, um, an event may be put together in the same sort of way, a matchmaking event in a country. And then, of course, there's certified trade missions, some of which are now starting to come online. 
Lastly, and I, I would like to mention a little bit about commercial diplomacy. Commercial diplomacy is advocacy, US government advocacy on behalf of a company that is bidding on a, on a foreign government contract. And if you find yourself in that sort of situation, we have advocacy teams that we will put you in touch with. There's an application that you have to fill out. There's a vetting process that'll be under uh, that'll that'll take place. And if you're approved for commercial advocacy, you may find that uh, you know we'll offer up uh, perhaps the ambassador, but certainly a consul general who uh, will advocate with the agency that's led to contract on your behalf. So we do, we do matchmaking, we provide market intelligence and we provide technical counseling. And I think with that to kind of preserve time, I'm going to stop sharing and I'd like to turn it over to Heather if there are no, if there are no questions. I'll let you take it. Thank you. All right, yep, uh, I believe my, yep, it looks like it's showing there so. Um, I'm going to focus today on the RAISE program, um, and Kevin was uh, gave us far too much credit. Um, Kevin was one of our early beta testers on this program, and, and Will uh, there in Williston. Um, we did a program in Western North Dakota, working with companies where we um, had a research-centric approach. So this program exists, and we got congressional support from Senator Hoven, Senator Kramer. Um, and, and Kelly Armstrong uh, now as well. And um, so it was because we tested it first on guinea pigs like Kevin. <laughs> so the basic premise of the program, uh, well, what it is, is a congressionally funded national rural research center based in Fargo. And it was established right when the pandemic started in May, 2020. So we've been able, because of the funding that came through our congressional support, We've been able to hire nine contractors, uh, four full-time, uh, four part-time. You're like, what's your math? We will soon be hiring a uh, fifth full-time person, hence the nine. <laughs> um, and we offer three services. We do in-depth research. We do uh, a, a service to evaluate your website and advise on how globally friendly it is. And then we also do some workshops. So why would you want to export? What, what, and why would you want to research? Um, basically, if you contrast an ill-informed exporter with a well-informed exporter, you see a big difference. And um, someone who just kind of willy-nilly approaches exporting um, without a plan, without a strategy, without data, uh, you can get caught um, by uh, bad actors. You can waste a lot of time, a lot of money. You can be chasing rabbits around the world that you know end up not being real. So you contrast that with someone who really takes a systematic and data-driven approach. And it, it just, it's just a better deal all around. And Kevin was just a perfect epitome of using information that we generated. And I mean, he just soaked it all in and, and ran with it. And that's our ideal company to work with is somebody who's gonna use that information and run with it. So our goal is to help build your knowledge with data um, build the connections with our global network all over the world through our embassies and consulates, which Carrie just talked about. And ultimately that builds your confidence so that you're not just like waiting for something to fall from the sky where you're like, okay, well, now I got a lead. I guess I'll chase after that. So you're going forward and you're more in the driver's seat. That's what we're looking for. So this is our team. Yeah, this is all a Fargo run thing here. <laughs> and it was just me a few years ago. So um, we have a lot of interns. Um, the team on the right-hand side is the contractors, the Rural Export Center. Um, we have staff uh, mostly based in Fargo, but also a few that are based in other places. With the pandemic, we've been uh, running virtually this entire time. And then the students on the bottom left there are all full-time students who are volunteer interns through a State Department program. So they are from all over the U.S. And we're just cranking out research left and right for rural companies. Um, throughout the United States. This map shows where the reports um, have been coming from, where the requests have been coming from. Um, as you can see, Montana has been just a fantastic team to work with, a very proactive, bringing lots of good companies to the forefront. Uh, North Dakota, Carrie's about to overtake me and I, I just gotta keep you know, driving away so Carrie can't overtake me <laughs> with, with uh, companies and reports, uh, joking. 
So um, this is kind of a snapshot showing the geographic spread that we have helping companies. Um, so I'll just skip past this because we want to get to the meat here. Um, so we're doing in-depth market research. We subscribe to databases that are the, the value of what we're investing in these databases. It's over a million dollars a year that our department invests in these databases. You wouldn't want to subscribe to all those databases. It would be expensive and it's hard to learn how to use them. We do that and then we leverage the data points that you need and we synthesize the data into something meaningful for you and say, here's what it looks like would be the best course of action for you based on all this data. We analyze it and we give you a plan and, and a, kind of a path forward where you can plug right into the network. Um, so all companies in North Dakota and Montana qualify as rural. You're all rural um, because of not having a lot of international trade resources in either state. So I'm gonna show you now an example of a matrix. Um, we talked about this, okay. So this is a matrix. Um, the cost of this service is um, $950. So with this matrix, you get a worldwide summary um, of all countries. I gotta minimize this, okay. Um, where your market is the best based on data points that we discuss and plan out together. So this is a fictitious fi uh, fitness equipment company. And we're looking at, you know, which countries import a lot of recreational equipment? Um, do they import it from the United States? Because that shows that they're not as price sensitive or, you know, big China importers. Um, what is the tariff? If it's a high tariff, like here, you see China had a 12% um, tariff. Um, then that's kind of a downer. So then they get penalized. So then this leads to scores and points. If you're better, you get more points. And you know, we got how many gyms do we have per thousand? How many people are Googling fitness trends or fitness goals? How many people are using weight loss mobile apps? How many people exercise with cardio and walking? How many distributors do we have? We're consulting 10 to 20 databases to gather all this data. We compile it for you, we, we load in all these calculations, and then that churns out a ranking of countries, which we then give to you, and we discuss with you, and then you go ahead and choose six countries from all the whole world. Then we reach out to our overseas offices throughout the world, uh, the, the six that you chose, and we give them some basic questions, and we say, um, do you think that this record year fitness company has a good opportunity? Can you rank that from zero to 10? And uh, we get the read on the market from the in-country people who deal with that specific industry. And that's extremely helpful because it, it gives you a on the ground reality check. And then it, it sets that person up to be your helper in the future if you need to do some matchmaking. So once we do the country comparison, uh, then we would move into more of a, a country research report. And you can mix and match. You don't have to do the matrix. You can just do a research report like this. Um, so this is the same fictitious exercise equipment company. And, um, you know, we, we do a, an assessment of the three countries. So you've got feedback from six around the world and you choose three. And then we delve into that. Um, so I'm going to show you here navigation. Um, so um, we give you a summary of the research that we did. And then we give you a summary of like the results of the matrix analysis, a landed cost analysis comparing the three countries, Atlantis, Prussia, and Pangea. And, and then we delve, well, here's a little bit on regulation in the three countries. And then we delve into a comparison of the countries. So um, in Pangea, you get a country overview of what's the exercise equipment market. In Pangea, we again consult a plethora of sources. Um, is it going up? Is it going down? Um, you know, how's it look? And then we actually give you a list of potential buyers. Um, and this is to 60 contacts. And we scan through hundreds to find the best for you. We provide a, a link to their website, an address, a contact if we can find it, a description of why we thought they were relevant for you. And then uh, we will present all this information to you and turn it all over. And you can either just follow up with these companies on your own, or you can tap into our services, um, which we give you recommendations. It's, it's not like, oh, here, we'll throw you a mountain of information and then you figure it out. We actually kind of know what 
uh, options are available. And we present numerous options of, of services you can do, trade missions you can go on, partners you can work with, um, you know, research you can do on your own, XM Bank. There's just a lot of stuff that you can kind of use with this information. So um, that's a quick snapshot of what's included. The matrix, the big Excel file is $950. Um, the country, if you did one country, it would be $950. The most popular service is the matrix plus three country report, which includes 30 to 60 partners, and that's $3,750. And both Montana and North Dakota are providing a 75% reimbursement on this right now. So it's a really good deal for companies. Um, one last thing, and that's um, where to connect with us. Uh, we do have our own LinkedIn page, Rural Export Center. And we also have a, a well, website where we have some success stories. Um, Palmer Bit is one of the success stories on the list. Well, they're all actually North Dakota. Uh, they're almost all developed the program and now it's national thanks to the congressional support. So um, that's my quick summary. Um, you can reach me at this email address or you can email me at uh, rural at trade.gov. And I will, uh, if I can't help you, I'll figure out who can help you. Carrie is also um, your point of contact for Montana. So it would be the same. It would be carrie.hester at trade.gov. Uh, but I know where uh, to find him as well. So if you're from Montana, I can point you to Carrie um, if you don't have his email address. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Heather. Um, and thank you, Carrie. And thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everyone who participated today. Thank you. Um, uh, Anne had the presence of mind to record this. So if you know anyone else who would benefit from hearing about this, uh, please contact Anne or me. Um, and I want to thank Anne for putting this all together. This is her first Zoom presentation, and I think it worked out just very well. Does anyone have any questions for any of the um, uh, presenters? No questions? That Well, that was easy. Um, sorry for my computer here. Um, anybody, so if that's the case, then please um, do what you can to uh, consider exporting for your company or finding, talk to your neighbor, talk to others who, um, may have a product or a service that is export ready or export viable. Um, and feel free to call Kevin or me for any mentoring. <laughs> um, and Heather and Juwan or Drew are also very available to help at any time if you're in North Dakota. And then um, of course, then we have our uh, Carrie from Montana. So. Thank you all for participating. This was our inaugural Western Regional Economic Development single topic presentation for current and potential members. So uh, thank you. You Let see my picture? My picture is, uh, I think, by Williston. <laughs> it's, one, it's the Badlands. <laughs> oh, there you go. Of course. I didn't put it Badlands. up just for this either. It's always there. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. We'll sign off now. I appreciate your participation. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.